As a company, we could just leave it at carbon removal. What we're seeing is that if we stop at carbon removal, there's a lot of impact that's left there. A lot of impact that can be utilized for the benefit of industries, for populations, for society. What's unique about these machines is aside from producing the biochar, we also have a very advanced system for collecting and extracting biofuels from the off gases coming from that process. This is a biofuel that has an impact or a CO2 reduction of something like 92%. If this was to be used by the shipping industry, that would have a significant impact on what is today one of the most hard to abate industries out there. The past year has been really exciting at MASHMIX. Just recently, a biofuel was successfully tested on an onshore marine engine, thereby paving the way for an advanced vessel test scheduled for later this year. We have launched our first commercial site in India with four parallel reactors, producing biofuel and thousands of tons of biochar from agro-processing residues. We have ramped up production and gotten best-in-class certifications in the form of the European Biochar Certificate and ISCC. We're also very proud of the work that has gone into the biochar research in terms of field trials with farmers that proves benefits for both crops and soil. The climate crisis hits hardest on the global south, where the social cost of carbon is highest. Here in India, we have conducted over 30 trials in a region affected by inconsistent rainfall to showcase the benefit of biochar in the form of stronger crop, better production and healthier soil, even in drought conditions. In last five seasons, we find out that using biochar for agriculture uh, increased the productivity 20 to 40 percent higher than the conventional or control plot and I'm hopeful that biochar could be a potential tool to tackle the climate change in the agriculture sector. Our scalable platform embodies a just green transition, removing carbon while creating economic opportunities for those who need it the most. So right now, uh, we have a site that is running on cashew press cake. We can do 50 to 100 sites of the current size based on that niche residue. That's not where it stops for us. Our ambitions go into the tens of thousands of sites. We're very excited to soon take our next step in terms of our technology platform, and that is to move into thermal gasification. The really neat thing about thermal gasification is that unlike pyrolysis, the input is not really that important. In pyrolysis, if you have a certain input, it'll definitely affect what the output will look like. Whereas in thermal gasification, we can put in sugarcane residues, we can put in sewage sludge, and the output will always be the same. So what we're wanting to do in the near future is to onboard some other biomass residues that is available in grotesque abundance, but it's always gonna be a so-called syngas, that is hydrogen, CO2, CO, and nitrogen, with trace amounts of uh, methane. And that is a perfect starting point for us to go into a bunch of really exciting energy commodities, while at the same time producing the highest possible quality of biochar. We're all about impact. For us, that means displacing fossil fuels, making it possible to decarbonize things like the shipping industry. It means getting biochar out to impoverished farmers, making sure that they have uh, more drought resilience, increased yields, better livelihoods, stronger food systems, making sure that we remove as much CO2 or CO2 equivalents from the atmosphere as is possible. What was one is just a, you know, small get up with, uh, you know, some weird machines running at a university and then eventually in India has now become something that has a genuine chance of creating this gigaton impact that we're, we're talking about. <laughs>